he had been put on the transplant list at four o'clock, but there wasn't enough time. He, um, they'd have to put the LVAD in him. I sat there and wondered whether I wanted him to be hooked up to the LVAD because I really didn't understand. I, w I just presumed it was a machine and Mike and I have both agreed that we don't want to have life support. The psychologist gave him a needle which snapped him out of it. Just enough time for me to ask him whether he wanted to go with the operation and have the LVAD put in and he said yes and that took all the pressures off of my daughter and I. The HeartMake LVAD left ventricular assist device is a heart assist device specifically designed to take over the pumping function of the portion of the heart called the left ventricle. The LVAD is implanted below your heart and is attached to your heart and your main artery, the aorta. The blood from your heart flows into the LVAD and then is pumped into the aorta and through to your body. By the 1990s, heart surgery included transplantation as part of the necessary skill set for future generation of cardiovascular surgeons. In 2002, due to his extensive training in heart transplantation and artificial heart technology, Dr. Vivek Rao was promoted to Director of Cardiac Transplant at UHN at the age of 34. When the device was first developed, uh, the thoughts were that in general you can probably get an emergency heart transplant for your patient within six months. So most of the devices were designed with a view to support someone from six to twelve months um, with the thought that you'd be able to get them transplanted within that time frame. In 1969, the first total artificial heart was implanted into a 47-year-old man and used as a bridge until he could receive a donor heart which he did 64 hours later. In 1978, the first bridge to transplant using an LVAD was performed. Although the device's performance was satisfactory, the patient died of infectious complications as a result of suppressing the immune system, one of the main obstacles in organ transplants. This immune suppression is, however, necessary to prevent the body from rejecting an organ. Implanting a whole artificial heart was once again attempted in December 1982 when a team at University of Utah implanted a Jarvik 7 total artificial heart into a 61-year-old man. The patient survived for 112 days, but the quality of his life was poor and the venture massively expensive. What became more apparent as research and clinical trials continued in the use of mechanical heart assist devices was that replacing the whole heart was not always necessary. Giving the heart muscle some support was usually all that was needed. Also critical to the success of the bridge to transplant method was the introduction of a new immune suppression drug in the early 1980s. In 1984, with the help of this new immune suppression drug, the world's first successful bridge to transplantation with an LVAD was performed. On November 3rd, 2001, UHN's Dr. Vivek Rao implanted Canada's first HeartMate LVAD into a patient. Um, I approached Michael, I told him, and I think it was very clear to him that he wasn't doing very well and uh, I think Sandy could see it as well on a day-to-day -day basis how he was deteriorating and deteriorating rapidly. But I think a lot of times we approach people who have been relatively healthy until they present to hospital uh, and then all of a sudden we hit them with the fact that they're probably going to need a heart transplant and by the way you're probably not going to survive long enough to get a heart transplant so as a bridge we're going to put a device into you and, and in those situations uh, it can be very uh, overwhelming to a patient and, and Mike was sort of in that category although he had been living with his heart failure for for some time and, and knew that he had a bad heart uh, I think the concept of heart transplantation and a device came fairly suddenly upon him um, but I think seeing how his health had deteriorated so quickly I think it was not a shock to him that he was going to need a new heart on September 21, 2004, Dr. Vivek Rao implanted UHN's last heartmate LVAD in stock that day into 56-year-old Mike McDonald, who was dying of abnormal heart rhythm. 
Well, when I woke up uh, that morning, I, I wanted to know what was going on, which they were very helpful with. The doctor was in two or three times to see me that uh, put the machine in, and uh, the nurses, the doctors, everybody here was just terrific. And they took a good time to explain everything. And uh, after they explained exactly what was going on, uh, I felt very comfortable with it because it, um, I knew that it was keeping me alive and that uh, now I had a chance to get a heart transplant down the road. There was a lot of learning process with the ALVAD. Both Mike and Kelly and I had to learn how to change batteries into the machine and change how to, which ones were used. Each battery lasts two hours and you have to carry every battery with you at all times and then at night you hook it up to the general machine and then he's hooked up to the general machine all night long. Um, it's noisy, but it's something you get used to. A lot of time I laid awake and just listened to it and was a pretty happy man to be there to listen to it. It was very easy to live with because I knew that I had a second chance at life, so that's all I thought about. On October 8, 2004, less than three weeks after his LVAT was implanted as a bridge to a heart transplant, Mike McDonald went home where he anxiously waited for that important phone call that a donor heart was available. In September 2004, Mike McDonald was suffering from severe heart failure. After thorough examinations and tests, the doctors at UHN's Toronto General Hospital's prognosis was that Mike had only 24 hours to live. The 56-year-old grandfather was immediately put on the transplant list, and it was decided that a heartmate LVAD, left ventricular assist device, would be implanted in order to keep Mike alive until a donor heart was available. The device is designed to take over the pumping function of the portion of the heart called the left ventricle. Less than three weeks after the LVAD was implanted, Mike went home to await the call that a matching donor heart had been found. Throughout this period, he continued to be under the care of cardiologist Dr. Heather Ross. There were no other options, and we did really run through all of them, the possibility of high-risk bypass surgery, uh, any other medications. We went through each one, and we do that in turn with every patient that we see. The other reason being not only are there not enough hearts to go around, but transplant is a treatment. It, it isn't a cure. Uh, when we transplant patients, the average life expectancy after transplant is about nine and a half years. And if they survive the first year, which is the highest risk period, the average life expectancy is about 12 years. Dr. Ross's passion for her work in organ transplantation led her in December 2004 to participate in a unique climbing expedition in Bolivia that included fellow doctors and organ recipients. The purpose of the journey to the Sajama volcano was to bring public awareness to the need for organ donors and the hospital's mechanical heart assistance program. What's really important to know about this is that there is nowhere else in the GTA where mechanical circulatory support or left ventricular assist device support is available. Five years ago, we wouldn't have been able to, have, to offer that therapy to bridge the patient to transplant, but now when we get a call from New Market or Scarborough or, or Trillium, we can actually bring the patient in, assess them for transplant. If they're a transplant candidate, then we can actually put in, if they need it, uh, the left ventricular assist device to actually support them uh, through to the transplant. 